Hi folks, it feels a little bit like long time no see, but of course it's only been a few days. Um, and I wanted to do the weekly overview and get back in the swing of things. I do have other videos for this week that I think it, it, it's, it's, it is, as weeks go in terms of aspects and transits, a relatively benign week. I actually think that in some ways I'll go over the I'll go over the the transits and aspects in a second. Um, we're still sort of the week after the full moon energy, and we really don't start to head into the new moon in Scorpio till next week, as far as I'm concerned. So it's still energetically a good week to get things done. Uh, they're relatively balanced. Uh, there's room for productivity, um, and the aspects between transiting planets are not unusual. I would say they're the usual suspects, the usual mix of trines and squares. I think in some ways the bigger news is that on October the 22nd, the sun moves into Scorpio. So right now we've got the south node and the sun in Libra, Mercury and Venus in, no, Mercury in Scorpio. Venus and Sagittarius, Pluto and Capricorn, Saturn and Neptune and Pisces, the North Node and Chiron in Aries, Uranus and Taurus, Jupiter in Gemini, and Mars in Cancer. So we've got planets just about in all parts of the chart, with the exception of Leo and Aquarius and Virgo, but we are still dealing with, we're still in the middle of the Mercury communication cycle in Leo, so that leaves Virgo and Aquarius out for now, which is pretty even-handed, so it isn't surprising that we're dealing with our mix and share of trines and squares. Um, I actually think, you know, there are three videos I think I want to do as the week progresses. One of them, I want to, I want to isolate what the personal planets are doing as they move through Scorpio, and I want to talk about what the personal planets will be doing as they move through Sagittarius. And when we do the Sagittarius one, it will give us a bit of a heads up related to the Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius that is coming up in five weeks time at this point in time. So there's still time. Five weeks is five weeks as far as Mercury is concerned. And I would say of four of those weeks, another month of Mercury being direct, and that's how we should take it and run with it and assume that's that's how we should treat it. Um, but yeah, and then and then I want to and then I start to want to look at that Mars Pluto opposition that's coming up on November the third with greater closeness. So so those are the next few sets up, and then the new Moon in Scorpio video. So I think you know over the next eight or nine days, my work is cut out for me. Uh, let me let me let me go through the transits and the aspects on October twenty first tomorrow. Venus trines the North Node and Mercury trines Saturn. Lovely. On the 22nd, Tuesday, the Sun squares Pluto on its way to moving into Scorpio. Then we have no other aspects this week. That's it. On the 28th, which is a Monday, so I do want to cover the Monday uh, because otherwise we don't get a chance to cover the Monday until the Sunday or the Monday, which is too late. On the 28th, Mars trines Neptune and Venus squares Saturn. So, so this Venus has moved into Sagittarius. We've already talked about, and I covered the Venus trine North Node last week. So we've got Venus trining North Node tomorrow, Mercury trining Saturn, Mercury in um, Scorpio, having just entered Scorpio pretty recently trining so mercury is moving pretty fast mercury trining saturn in pisces um the sun from libra squaring pluto and then entering scorpio and then as we head to as we look ahead a little over a week we've got mars in cancer trining neptune and venus in sag squaring saturn this is part of the reason why i want to break down and really look at the houses in your chart that are occupied by scorpio and sagittarius and talk about as the, as Venus and then Mercury and the Sun and the new moons kind of make their transits through these two houses, the Scorpio house and the Sagittarius house, what is that about and what is that setting up and what are the opportunities and what are the challenges? 
Venus trining the North Node tomorrow is really, out of all of these aspects, the loveliest of the aspects. And in general, we've still got a, 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 a dominance, in a sense, of this kind of trine energy. Some of this is the water sign energy, water sign trine energy that I've been talking about between uh, Mars in Cancer, uh, the planets that are going over Scorpio, and Saturn and Neptune and Pisces trining and supporting each other. And often a trine can just feel, you may not feel like anything amazing is happening, but it just creates a sense of harmony as opposed to the discord we might feel when the planets are squaring each other. I mean, we are gearing up to Venus squaring Saturn, Venus and Sagittarius squaring Saturn on the 28th. And that will feel like tension and discord. Whereas with the trines, if you've been experiencing challenges when the personal planets were going over Gemini, for example, last June, um, as the planets get ready to square Saturn or Neptune and the discord that is felt there, when these trines have been occurring in October and November, it might just feel like things are relatively placid, relatively calm, and that the disharmony is not quite so in our faces. Now, with the planets getting ready to move into Scorpio and Sagittarius, we have our sets of trines and squares that are starting to take hold and operate, especially as the planets go into Sagittarius and then Capricorn and then Aquarius, you know. So so we're going to start to feel, enjoy, I, as I told you, November, these water sign trines, this opportunity really coming in from the Scorpio part of the chart to support Mars in Cancer and Mars pursuing his goals and setting boundaries in Cancer. And, and this energy from both Mars and Cancer and the personal planets transiting Scorpio, supporting Saturn and trying to stabilize the Pisces part of the chart, that energy is still very present. You know, Mercury trines Saturn tomorrow and Mars trines Neptune, Mars and Cancer trining Neptune and Pisces on October the 28th. And that may give certain topics that have been stressful, especially with regard to the Pisces parts of our chart that needs a certain amount of stabilizing. It either takes the focus away from the discord or it helps us take some action to actually stabilize that part of the chart, especially as we head towards that Mars-Neptune trine. And remember, Mars is trining Saturn and Neptune three times Mars's transit, when we look at the arc of moving in a desired direction towards the Aries part of the chart where the North Node eclipses continue to exercise their influence till the end of the first week of June next year, there are three astrological events that contribute to that journey. Mercury going retrograde in Sagittarius, November 26th to December 15th. Mars going retrograde between Cancer and Leo. Uh, December 4th to February 24th or 26th, something like that. And then and then Venus and Mercury going retrograde um, between Pisces and Aries in March and April. So it is until the middle of April, mid to end of April, that we are done with these contributing factors to this arc that we're trying to move towards. And then we get a chance from the middle to the end of April, to the end of the first week of June, to kind of stabilize whatever it is that we've been able to create for ourselves. And with the Mars retrograde, yeah, we do have that transformational opposition to Pluto, but there's something about the energy that takes us to mid to end April that can really, we, we, we might really experience Mars trying hard to stabilize the Pisces part of the chart, assisting assisting Saturn in doing so. And we're just beginning that journey. Mars just trying Saturn for the first time a few weeks ago. Mars is trying Neptune in a week's time. Mars is then going to enter Leo. Mars will try in the North Node. Venus just trying the North Node today. Uh, it, it is going to try in the North Node tomorrow, followed by Mercury and followed by the Sun. So, 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 All in all, as Mars retrogrades go, this is one of the more constructive 
excited. It has a lot of potential for positive transformation. And even the oppositions to Pluto, which which can be, I don't want to use the word destabilizing. It's as if, it's as if Mars's aspects and transits to Pluto kind of, they, they can have kind of a wrecking ball quality, but maybe in some cases it's just the energy that we need in order to help us move forward in some ways. Now, let's, let's, let's break this down. Venus trines the North Node tomorrow. It could very well be that as last week progressed, and even over the weekend, and as we're heading towards tomorrow, there could have been some kind of creative opportunity, artistic opportunity, financial opportunity, relationship opportunity. This would be from the Sagittarius part of your chart, the house occupied by Sagittarius. And it would be in conversation with the North Node transiting through Aries and the North Node eclipses. Uh, the next North, the final North Node Aries eclipse is on March the 29th of next year, but it's this Aries eclipse, the South Node eclipse in Libra. It's the Aries Libra axis eclipse. We just had the South Node Libra eclipse on October 2nd. So this is the eclipse axis now that is dominating our charts till the end of the first week of June of next year. And with Venus getting involved in the conversation and Mars preparing to do so in November when he trines the North Node for the first time. And then when we have Mercury when he enters Sagittarius in a couple of weeks, the Sun when he enters Sagittarius in about a month's time at this point in time, they will get in line to trine the North Node as well. With Venus trining the North Node from Sagittarius, you know, it's worth it, I think, to pay attention to the last week or so and just see what has happened. I said, as I said, creatively, financially, relationship-wise, what sort of a portal has been opened, that then it's the first of this set of North Node trines. Mars will support that trine from Leo, and then these other personal planets will follow. And when the other personal planets follow, when Mercury follows, and Mercury will, even though Mercury goes retrograde in Sagittarius, Mercury will trine the North Node only once, because Mercury is not going to come as far back as to conjunct the North Node again. Um, but then the Sun will, when Mercury gets ready to trine the North Node from Sagittarius, whatever opportunity Venus is bringing to us or whatever, uh, whatever opportunity Venus has brought to us can develop further into the realm of communication. And then with the Sun and the New Moon in Sagittarius, they'll develop that to see how far we, it goes. Enjoy these trine energies. Enjoy the water sign trine energies. Enjoy the fact that Venus has trined the North Node, is not trying the North Node tomorrow, and Mars is going to be in place to do that in November, and the other planets will follow from Sagittarius to trine the North Node. Because once, once these personal planets start to head into Capricorn, they're going to square the North Node. And then we enter, again talking about this kind of birth canal, this arc related to the direction that we wanted to move in since March, April, May, June, July of 2023, but have not been able to because we need to release something in the Libra part of the chart, which is the priority by the week before and after December the 2nd of this year to make some substantial progress towards that direction and head in that direction, desired direction that we've been trying to move in since March, April, May, June, July of last year by the end of the first week of June on that arc symbolized by the house occupied by Aries in your chart. That's the direction we're trying to move towards. On that arc, by the time you get to the Mercury and Venus retrograde between Aries and Pisces in March and April, the personal planets, but especially Mars and Venus, will conjunct the North Node three times. So we are, we are getting into a series of conversations around this desired direction and the North Node and the North Node in Aries, which is where the trines are happening now. And then after the calendar year turns, the North Node is going to enter Pisces. The first of the Pisces North Node eclipses occurred uh, on September 17th of this year. So the week before and after July the 17th, the week before and after September 17th, the North Node enters Pisces. And once the North Node enters Pisces, again, we're going to have Mars trining that North Node 
a couple of times. We're going to have um, Venus and the Sun and Mercury, but Venus and Mercury getting ready to conjunct the North Node three times in Pisces. So, as I said, it's not a simple, I'm going to go from A to B. There's a desired direction I wanted to go. There's a process here. And enough energy is being spent on both the eclipse axes. It's, it's, it's a very pregnant time. And as I said, when I did the full moon video a few days ago, that full moon in the middle of this past week that we've just had really ushered us and pushed us into this energy of more of greater dynamic activity greater dynamic activity to start to move in the direction that we want to move in. And that movement can be achieved either by focusing on releasing what we need to in the Libra part of the chart. But with these trines to the North Node in this calendar year, preparing for conjunctions with the North Node next year, the direction we want to move to is going to get triggered again and again and again and again. So. The best thing with Venus trining the North Node tomorrow is just to think about over the past week or so, if you know your chart, what house is occupied by Sagittarius in the chart? What has happened over the past week that could create portals of opportunity or portal of opportunity? Now, because Venus is the first of the planets that has come into Sagittarius, some of this may currently be happening in the background, and it's when Mercury comes into Sagittarius and the Sun and the new moon in Sagittarius occurs that you might really see what Venus has been up to while she's been transiting Sagittarius uh, from the middle of October till November 11th or so. So so out of everything going on this week, it's the Venus North Node trine that I'm delighted that it is occurring and we're here. And there's a whole set of conversations with the North Node that are beginning and getting ready to begin. And this is part of the reason why I said this full moon that just occurred in Aries, again, a full moon related to the sign, uh, full moon conjunct Chiron, very much echoing the themes uh, related to the new moon solar eclipse in Aries on April the 8th of this year. Um, and it's the Aries part of the chart that represents the arc in the direction that we're moving towards, uh, that this Act, this 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 arc takes us to the end of the first week of June of next year. Um, I'll acknowledge I'm doing this video in a sense almost as if you've been watching my channel and you know what I am talking about. So there's more detail on each of these topics. If you just look at my list of videos, if this is the first of my videos that you're seeing, you'll be able to see videos where I break down a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about here, this arc that takes us to the end of the first week of June and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so Venus trines the North Node tomorrow, ushering in just as just as the full moon encapsulated Mars getting ready to oppose Pluto, which is one of the important and key energies of transformation between now and the middle to the end of April. These conversations with the North Node trines, for the most part, in 2020 for the remainder of 2024, and then heading towards these conjunctions with the North Node in February, March, and April. Um, Venus kind of opens the door for it tomorrow. And, and the North Node symbolizes the direction we're trying to move in. It symbolizes our desire. Now with the North Node and with the North Node eclipses, as I've said to you before, they always have a tendency to promise more than they deliver. They're shiny. They create a surreal sense of longing. And they can really kind of do a number on our excitement and a sense of magic and a sense of this is where the next right but always with the north node keep your remain financially and emotionally grounded know what your needs are and don't just throw all caution to the wind in order to move in the direction that the north node is pulling you towards honor that sense of calling and pull that is where very possibly our future development and our adventure lies but it's the job of the North Node to seem really attractive and shiny as it pulls us towards it. The reality is not going to be quite so mythical. Okay. And, and also with the North Node, as we start to move towards it, it does feel right. And so that is what creates the sense of um, eagerness and rashness 
because it feels like if it feels so right, there's going to be something at the other end of it that will support me through it. But the North Node loves a certain kind of instability. And so it becomes important for us to make sure that our financial and emotional security and houses are in order as we move in the directions that we desire and pursue the goals related to the Aries part of the chart. So Venus and Sagittarius, the first of the personal planets to enter Sagittarius this year, trines the North Node. Over the last week or so, and it's not of the as if the energies haven't been stressful. You know, we've, we've had that full moon. Um, we've had, I will say, over the past two or three weeks, this lingering, slightly Mercury retrograde, Mercury slow down feeling. For a while, it had to do with Mercury being combust and close to the sun, but at this point in time, it isn't. So, hopefully, that energy is starting to lift and clear. But what is not going to lift and clear quite so easily is what the eclipses are trying to get us to do. Remember the last video that I did when I said that if you're feeling like spirit or the universe is really trying to constrict you to move only in one direction, that's the eclipses that we've just come out of eclipsing things in and out and opening and closing certain doors. And that creates its own stress. It creates its own sense of inevitable change. It creates its own sense of, well, I can no longer resist this change, so I've got to create or participate in it. And of course, the, 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 the South Node eclipses are all about releasing what is now stagnant. And in the middle of all this, to have Venus and Sagittarius trying the North Node and say, okay, this is the first of the trines, then Mars will try the North Node, and then Mercury will come into place before he goes retrograde, and the Sun will come into place, and it's nice somewhere somewhere that that arc that beckoning is starting to be created pay attention to opportunities that are coming up and avail of them if they feel right to you and if they feel exciting to you um the rest of the transits this week and the aspects you know as i said we've got mars trining neptune on the 28th one of these water signs mars and cancer supporting neptune the, the, the stabilization of the havoc that Neptune has been wreaking in Pisces since 2012 and the crisis he created 1415, 2014, 15, but especially 1617. Or, as I've been saying to you in the Pisces part of the chart, the house occupied by Pisces, if you've been trying to move in a spiritual or renunciatory uh, or creative direction, then there's an opportunity to really start to structure those plans. Um, but that's part of these water sign trines. Uh, Mercury trining Saturn, another. Mercury and Scorpio. So again, we're talking about these water sign trines that are supporting, stabilizing the Pisces part of the chart. Um, and if you are in some sort of action that is allowing you to do so, nothing like it. Wonderful. With Venus recently having gone through Scorpio, with Mercury going through Scorpio, it could be that as this week progresses, and as even as last week has occurred, you know, even as because Mercury trines Saturn tomorrow, even as last week has occurred, you might feel like you've been communicating from the Scorpio part of the chart in order to help stabilize issues related to the Pisces part of the chart. So if Scorpio sits in your fourth house, you may have been sending out emails, sending out communications, using communication in some ways to create opportunity or uh, to stabilize the Pisces part of the chart in some way. You know, that's that's how I would interpret it. So if Scorpio, depending on which part of the chart Scorpio sits in and Pisces sits in, the Mercury-Saturn trine tomorrow may mean that over the past five or six days, past week, you were actively involved in using communication to help stabilize the Pisces part of the chart. So tomorrow, Venus trines the North Node, Mercury trines Saturn. Day after tomorrow, on October the 22nd, the Sun squares Pluto and enter Scorpio. The sun squares Pluto, the sun is in Libra, and then enter Scorpio. After Tuesday, we only have the south node in Libra, but the Libra month continues till um, till November the 1st. I define the month as new moon to new moon. So the new moon in Libra occurred on um, October the 1st, October the 2nd, October the 2nd, and 
the next new moon in Scorpio will be on November the 1st. So until November the 1st, we still are dealing with, um, there's still an emphasis on opportunities related to the Libra part of the chart, what we are releasing in the Libra part of the chart. Um, but on, on Tuesday, on the 22nd, the sun squares Pluto and enters Scorpio. The squares to Pluto, there's so much transformational energy in the air. I actually don't want to overanalyze each and every aspect. I mean, we know roughly what is going on. It's the Mars opposition to Pluto that is of greater interest to me. Pluto is in Capricorn finishing up his transit in the Capricorn part of the charts that he has been doing since 2008. And the emphasis till November the 19th is to dot the I and cross the T and com help Pluto complete this transformation, typically for our benefit, and it's a transformation of self-empowerment. And so with these squares, we're likely to reflect on what it is we're releasing in the Libra part of the chart, what it is that we're creating or can create from the Libra part of the chart, what we continue to do for the next week until the new moon in Scorpio that will help Pluto complete his transformation in the Capricorn part of the chart. It's that simple in terms of analyzing the aspect. And it's happening on Tuesday, so the past three or four days, the next couple of days, we may be in that space. The sun is not, the sun does not direct action. The sun is really our solar awareness and our visibility around matters related to the part of the chart that he is transiting. So it's unlikely that the sun will cause us to act in the Libra part of the chart as much as we may, might become really conscious of what have we been doing for the past three weeks? What are we going to do for the next week or so that is going to help stabilize the Capricorn part of the chart? Not stabilize, help Pluto complete his transformation in the Capricorn part of the chart. And then on Monday, Mars trines Neptune, Mars in Cancer, Neptune in Pisces, and Venus squares Saturn. Now this Venus, this is why I want to do a focus on what are the planets doing as they transit Scorpio. And even more intriguingly, what are the planets doing as they are transiting Sagittarius? There's something about activity in the Sagittarius part of the chart that provides a key. As I said, it's the first mark, the first of the retrogrades we're going to deal with on this arc to the end of the first week of June comes from Sagittarius, Mercury retrograde from November 26th to December 15th. And while it's true, that the planets as they enter Sagittarius trine the North Node, and that is a blessing, and they will trine Chiron in Aries, which is lovely, but they will oppose Jupiter and Gemini, and they will square Saturn and Neptune. And Venus is gonna be getting ready to um, square Saturn on the 28th, but Mercury, when he's retrograde, is gonna square Saturn three times. And Jupiter, of course, in the middle of squaring Saturn three times, the first square has already occurred. The second square is going to occur on Christmas Eve. So it's a dynamic set of personal planet transits in Sagittarius. Something happens in the Sagittarius part of the chart, which is why paying attention to Venus trining the North Node tomorrow sets up this kind of narrative uh, that the other personal planets will pick up on. Venus squaring Saturn this opportunity that Venus might be creating from the Sagittarius part of the chart, you might carry an acute awareness that you can really only capitalize on it as long as you're keeping an eye on stabilizing the Pisces part of the chart. Now, when a square happens, the faster moving planet has to take some sort of action to support the slower moving planets like Venus and Saturn come at a 90 degree angle at a stop sign and Venus has got to move first. She's the faster moving planet. She's got to take some action on something that allows Saturn to continue to stabilize the Pisces part of the chart. Another possibility is that Venus, as she's moving through the Sagittarius, delighted that she just had a conversation with the North Node and opportunities are being set up and she's driving along and she comes at a stop sign. 
not face to face with Saturn, but certainly there's a look exchange. Saturn stops her temporarily. And Venus has to acknowledge the stop and then start to move forward. So there's this awareness that the Pisces part of the chart still needs to be stabilized. And if it isn't, then it can kind of spill over and affect the full potential of the opportunities that we're trying to pursue through to the end of the first week of June. So we've got these dual things that we're trying to do. Pursue what excites us as symbolized by the Aries part of the chart, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction on April the 20th and the Taurus part of the chart that also its impact is going to be felt till about the end of the first week of June of next year. Jupiter creating an ending and a new beginning in the Gemini part of the chart. That's where the opportunity is. But then with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces stabilizing the Pisces part of the chart and whatever crisis of fogginess has been going on there since 2012, but particularly may have peaked in 14, 15, 16, 17, and we're still dealing with the consequences of that, except we have help, Saturn's help, the North Node Eclipse's help to help stabilize the Pisces parts. It's important to, it's like 50% of the energy opportunities, 50% of the energy stabilizing so that the Pisces crisis is not kind of spill over and flood and overtake and sabotage and affect uh, to whatever extent the kind of more exciting opportunity or that thread of desire that we are pursuing till the end of the first week of June that we have not been able to make progress on even though we articulated to ourselves what that direction was in April, May, June, July of 23. So Venus squares Saturn with Fundamentally, we've got three trines and two squares. Venus trining the North Node, Mercury trining Saturn, Mars trining Neptune. And we've got the Sun squaring Pluto and Venus squaring Saturn. And on Tuesday, the Sun moves into Scorpio. Outside of this, I don't want to talk any more about trines and squares. There are plenty of them that occur during the year. There are normal conversations that the faster moving planets that have have with the slower moving planets. There is an arc and a conversation to them. It's not, there's something about all these squares and trines that bears thinking about, but it really bears thinking about in the larger set of conversations and the larger set of activities that I have occurring in these houses, which is why, as I said, my next video is going to be about what is going on with, as these personal planets go over the sign of Scorpio and make their opposition to Uranus and trining Saturn and Neptune and etc etc and what is going to be going on right now we've only got Venus and Sag but what is going to go on as these planets move into Sag and Mercury goes retrograde in Sag we've already covered some of that in that Jupiter and retrograde in Gemini video that I did um, which in my opinion is one of my better videos over the last couple of weeks um, so, so a relatively benign week, hopefully, in terms of sort of global drama, it will remain a relatively, I mean, I say that and I realize how ridiculous it is what I'm saying, given the election coming out, you know, we're expecting some sort of drama. I'm sure we all are knowing that it's not just going to be placid as we head towards the election. So whatever that is and whenever it occurs, but from a general perspective, we're dealing with a set of squares and trines that we would expect to be dealing with right now. But the squares and trines are more interesting and meaningful. Venus is trying to the North Node, the water sign trines supporting the Pisces part of the chart. Venus getting to ready to square Saturn, who's going to be squared three times when Mercury is retrograde between November 26th to December 15th. It's the overall cumulative narrative where these trines and squares fit in that prevent me from just shrugging my shoulders and saying, ah, trines, squares. There's something to them, but we are better off outside of whatever analysis I've done. We're better off just trying to be productive and 
focusing on our priorities and they're going to be what they are for each of us. And I wouldn't be surprised if they involve juggling, stabilizing the Pisces part of the chart, releasing what you feel you need to in the Libra part of the chart. Those could very well be the two primary areas of focus. Mars and Cancer is very much part of the conversation. It's not necessarily a week to obsess about any major astrological aspect or transit. As we head into next week, past the 28th, and we head to that Scorpio new moon, we'll cover that week then. In the first few days of that next week, October 28th, 29th, towards November the 30th, uh, October the 30th, that's when we'll really feel some of the pre-new moon flatness. But then the new moon will occur and November will come in and November promises to be a transformational month. The big headline news of the next two weeks, really, as we head towards November the 3rd, is the first of the Mercury-Pluto oppositions. Mars-Pluto oppositions, sorry. So next, this is all I'm going to do for the weekly overview. We don't need to spend an hour this week on the weekly overview. But next, I'm going to do a video on the planets moving through Scorpio and what it is that these, the trines and squares they're making, where they fit into the narrative. I'm going to do a video on the planets moving through Sagittarius. That is in some ways kind of more critically important than the Scorpio one. And then after that, we're going to shift our attention to the Mars-Pluto opposition on November the 3rd. And then it'll be time to do the new moon video. Okay? Peace, love, rock and roll. Uh, if you're interested in me taking a look at your birth chart and trying to make sense of these transits and aspects and the eclipses and, you know, do a reading for you, my email address is in the description box below. Email me there. There are a couple of different options. One, my regular reading, which lasts 60 to 75 minutes. One for a 30-minute reading, which is more focused on a particular area or particular question or particular topic. I can give you details on that. So email me at that email address if you're interested. And I can send you information about rates, etc. So you have that and you can determine if you want to move forward or not. If you find my content useful, feel free to tell people about my channel. Get the word out. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Next to the subscribe button is a bell icon. If you hover over that wiggly bell on top, click on that. You will be notified when I do new videos. Thanks button underneath this video. You can use that to contribute to the channel and comment and like on the video. Like the video if you're so inclined. It gives a greater circulation on YouTube. Um, yep, relatively, I would say an engaging uh, weekly overview, but relatively benign. And but there's more content to follow that that will continue to get us in the right mindset. Uh, give us the right information that we need as we head into the last two and a half months of this year. Okay, thank you. Take care.